What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 joint tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create gears that move with the proper ratio in relationship with each other so that you can create animations and other movements that where gears actually drive things moving inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, we need to create our gears. And so I do not wanna get super in depth on the mechanics of different gears and things like that. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use an add-in or a script in order to quickly create gears that'll work for what we're trying to do. We can talk a little more about the specific mechanics of the different gears and the teeth in a future video. But for now, we just wanna to go to the Tools tab and click on Add-ins. And the first thing on here is gonna give you an option to load up a script or an add-in. And so when you do this, this is going to pop up. And this should be preloaded inside of your Fusion 360 when you open it up. It was for mine. But basically a script is a little piece of software that automates a function inside of Fusion 360. And we'll talk more about other scripts in the future. But for now, we wanna go into the scripts tag. We wanna scroll down and you're gonna see these two options for these two different uh, spur gear scripts. And it doesn't really matter which one of these you select at this point. I'm gonna select the one that's the C++ and I'm gonna click on run. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna run the script that allows me to create different gears. And in this situation, you can see how this gives you options to adjust things about the teeth and the thickness of your gear, the hole diameter, other things like that. So the hole diameter is going to be your central hole. Well, what we want to do in this situation is we want to start by just creating a simple gear with 24 teeth with a hole that's one inch in diameter. And we can leave the thickness at an half at a half inch, and we're not gonna mess with this other stuff for right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on OK. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna automate the creation of a gear inside of Fusion 360. So if I look at this straight up and down, you can see how this created a gear in here that has 24 teeth around the outside. And so now what we wanna do, and notice that this gets created as a component as well. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna create a second gear, but we want that gear to have twice as many teeth. So we're just gonna run the add-in again, but in this situation, we're gonna take our gear and we're gonna run it and we're gonna set it to have 48 teeth instead of 24 teeth. And we're gonna leave everything else the same and click on OK. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a gear that's gonna be twice as big as the gear we had before because it has twice as many teeth. So you can see how it's just much larger. It's just a larger gear. And so then what we wanna do is we wanna take this and we wanna move it so that the teeth kinda of intertwine over here um, right along this edge. So to do that, we're just gonna go back to our solids and we're gonna click on move or copy. And we want to select the option for move components so that we get the whole thing. And we just wanna click on this center point for our large gear. So I'm gonna click on my large gear right here and that'll select it. Then I'm just gonna move this across and I'm just gonna look at my teeth. I'm not gonna make this super complicated. I'm just gonna look at my teeth, with my gear right here. I'm just gonna move this until they're kind of intertwined. And so what you're gonna notice here, we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. What you're gonna notice here is right now your teeth are not aligned and that's because these two teeth are kind of intersecting or overlapping. So what we need to do is we need to rotate this gear just a little bit so that those teeth are no longer intersecting. So to do that, we're just gonna click on the mover copy again. We're just gonna select this component, which will give us the central point, And we just need to rotate this a little bit. And so you can either rotate this manually if you want to, or you can also do a little bit of math and um, in order to do the math, really the way that this works is this gear is gonna have 48 teeth on it. Well, we wanna rotate this by one position. So we wanna rotate this so that this is moved in this position right here. So in order to do that, we're just gonna do a little bit of math inside of our Z angle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do negative 360 degrees and we're gonna divide that by 48 times two. If you think about it, you want this to move basically half of a position, not a full position, um, because we don't want this to move all the way so that this tooth is aligned with this one. So we just wanna do divided by 48 times two, close parenthesis, hit the enter key. 
And so you can see how this rotated our gear so that our teeth are now aligned properly. And so you've got a little overlap between your teeth. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this other object and I'm gonna move it back just a bit so that then our teeth are kind of meshing properly and there's a little bit of a gap here. And there's some things you could do to make this a little bit more mathematically correct, but for what we're doing right here, this is gonna work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And now if I click on the home button, you can see how I've got these two gears in here with their teeth that are intersecting. And so now what we need to do is we need to start creating our joint. And so the first thing we need to do before we create our joint is we need to create something running through the center of these gears because we're gonna create an as-built joint between this gear right here and our central piece. And so you need two objects in order to do that. So to do that, we're just gonna click on create sketch. And just real quick, we're gonna click on the face this object. We're gonna click on capture position if it asks us for that. And we're just gonna draw a simple circle around the center or in the center of this object. And we're gonna click on finish sketch. So then when we do this, we can just come in here and we can just extrude this up and down. So I'm gonna extrude this symmetrically up and down. And we wanna make sure that this gets set to new body or new component when we do this. We don't want to set this to join because this needs to be a separate component so we can create a movement relationship between the two. So I'm gonna type in a value of three uh, make sure it's set to symmetric. We're going to click on OK. And so what that's done is that's created this cylinder in here as another component. And so we're going to do the same thing for this other gear. So just create a sketch, draw a circle, finish your sketch. And then extrude this symmetrically by three inches and set it to create a new component and click on OK. So in this case, we don't wanna create a joint, we wanna create an as-built joint because these objects are going to stay in place, they're not going to move. So we're just gonna select as-built joint, we're just gonna select our two components. So I'm gonna select my two components and then it's gonna ask me for a position. So the position is gonna be the point around which the movement happens. In this case, you can see how I can mouse over this edge right here, and I can either select something at the top of this gear or right in the center. It doesn't really matter as long as they're the same on both of these, but we're just gonna click on this. And we wanna make sure we have the Revolute option selected. And then if you click on Animate, you can see how this previews this movement so you can see how it's working properly. And then we're gonna click on OK. Then we're gonna do the same thing for this other joint. So we're gonna create an as-built joint between these two objects We'll set our position based on this point right here. So you can see how now that's a revolute joint as well. So now we've got our two gears in here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to ground our central points because if we click and move this right now, you can see how this is gonna fly up in the air, which is not what you want. So you need to tell Fusion 360, okay, when I click and drag this joint, there needs to be something that doesn't move. Well, that's gonna be our two components. So we're just gonna right click on them and click on ground we're gonna ground this one as well. Now, if you click and drag this, you can see how this gear moves around this central point that we've selected. And then this gear moves as well. And so now what we need to do is we need to tie the movement between the two gears together. So when this gear moves, we need to set this so the other gear moves as well. And so to do that, we're gonna create a motion link. And a motion link is gonna allow us to tie the movement of one joint to another joint. So when this joint moves, this joint will move as well. So we're just gonna click on motion joint and it's gonna ask us to select the joints we wanna to tie together. Well, in this situation, we wanna tie this joint and this joint together. And so if we look at this from a top down view, you can see how they're both spinning right now. So you can see how, but the problem with this is they're both spinning at the same speed. Well, these are actually going to spin at different speeds because of the different radius of each object. So for right now, basically this is a two to one gear, to ra gear ratio because the larger one is twice as big as the small one. So what we need to do is we need to set this so that when the large gear creates one revolution, the small gear goes two revolutions because it has to move twice as fast to keep up with the large gear. And so we wanna set this so when our large gear turns 180 degrees, our small gear, 
gear turns 360 degrees so that our smart, small gear moves twice as fast as our large gear. And so you can see how the problem right now is that these are moving in the same direction. Well, this gear would drive this gear to move in the other direction. So what we want to do is we want to reverse this. So now you can see how because one joint is moving in one direction and one is moving in the other, we're actually getting the teeth meshing together when we do this movement. So this is actually moving like a real joint would with gears in real life. So we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And now those two movements are tied together. So if I click and drag this, you can see how these gears are actually moving the proper speed and the teeth are actually meshing together the way that the gears would in real life. And so I would like to create something more complex in a future video, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one as is. I think it does a really good job of demonstrating the way that you can tie joints together with your motion link in order to create working gears inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you starting to understand the motion link and the way these objects tie together? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below Below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.